Hello guys, welcome back to Explore Biology. In the last video session, I was discussing about blood. A brief introduction of blood. I said blood has plasma and also formed elements. Right? So formed elements are nothing but cells which are present in blood. Now from where these cells are coming? Actually, they should be a source, right? I said every cell will have certain lifespan. After that, it will undergo degradation, right? So how exactly these are again synthesized? Where exactly these are synthesized? That we are going to discuss in this video. So the process of synthesis of formed elements is known as hemopoiesis. Hemopoiesis. Now, why exactly this hemopoiesis is required? It is a silly question. See, if there is any uh, injury to your body, for example, you can take, you have pricked your finger for any kind of, um, like any kind of test, blood test, or they have taken some uh, ml of blood from your body. Now, you will lose all the cells from the blood, right? So, which will compensate that loss of blood? Right? There should be a compensation. So that compensation is done by this process, hemopoiesis. Okay, I told hemopoiesis is a process where formed elements are synthesized. Okay, now what about the other things? Like I told it also contains plasma. Plasma has a lot of proteins. Right? So from where these are coming? So most of the proteins, like I said albumin, globulin and also I said fibrinogen. Fibrinogen and albumin mostly they are synthesized from hepatocytes that are from liver cells. And what about globulin? I know you know the globulin part that is the major of the globulins that is immunoglobins. These are synthesized from where? From WBCs. Okay. So these are nothing but they are coming from cells itself. Right. So the major source is here the cells. So these cells are coming through a process that is hemopoiesis. Now, where exactly this hemopoiesis occurs? It occurs in blood? No. It takes place in a special location and that location varies through developmental stages. If you see the initial developmental stage of the fetus, initially it occurs in yolk cell. Okay. Then it occurs in thymus, spleen, liver okay and later on just before three months of the birth it occurs in red bone marrow okay and after the birth the synthesis occurs in red bone marrow it continues in red bone marrow now what exactly is this red bone marrow it is a new term again so the term, if you see the term red bone marrow, that means it occurs in bone. Marrow means nothing but space. Just remember one thing, in our body, wherever there are free spaces, it is totally filled with tissues. Now what is a tissue? It is nothing but group of cells again. So there are different types of tissues. We'll come to that topic again, okay? Remember that all this free spaces is totally filled by connective tissue. Connective tissue generally contains cells, fibers and also some of the proteins in it. Okay? Now this red bone marrow is also a space which is filled with connective tissue. Okay, fine. See, in body there are so many areas where connective tissue is present. Now why exactly is only red bone marrow is the site for hemopoiesis? Again, there is a logic here. So in red bone marrow, there is a specialized cell which is considered as mother of all the formed elements. That cell is nothing but pluripotent stem cell. So because of the presence of this specialized cell that is pluripotent stem cell, the red bone marrow is the site for synthesis of hemopoiesis. Okay. Now, what exactly is this red bone marrow? If you consider, where exactly is this present? It is present in bone, I said. So, consider not all the bones. Consider the long bones, okay? In long bones, if you see, there are two regions in long bones. This is just a diagrammatic representation, okay? 
So in long bones, you will see two different regions. The ends are termed as epiphysis and the middle region, this is diaphysis. If you see in the epiphysis region, in the epiphysis region, the tissue is the marrow, the space is divided by different plates. So here, these plates are termed as trabeculae. Trabeculae is a plural form. These plates are nothing but trabeculae. So this trabeculae, in between this trabeculae, there is connective tissue which contains the specialized cell that is pluripotent stem cell. So in between this trabeculae, you will find the connective tissue which has the specialized cell which is responsible for hemopoiesis. Okay. So this is about red bone marrow. If you heard about red bone marrow, maybe you have heard about yellow bone marrow also. Okay. Yellow bone marrow is nothing but conversion of red. That means the red bone marrow, marrow, I said red bone marrow has connective tissue. So here in connective tissue you will find cells. So here in yellow bone marrow you will find more amount of fat cells. Fat cells are nothing but adipocytes. So due to the storage of adipocytes it appears yellow. So this red bone marrow through age it converts into yellow bone marrow. Okay. And sometimes due to loss of blood, this yellow bone marrow can convert into red again and start synthesizing formed elements. So this is about the location of hemopoiesis. Now let us see what is the major cells which are coming from this pluripotent stem cell. Okay. So we will see the process of hemopoiesis clearly. So I said the mother cell here is pluripotent stem cell. Okay. So we have pluripotent stem cell. Stem cells are very familiar for us. It is a huge topic. It is a separate subject. You know. So that will come across again further in discussions. So pluripotent. Pluri means multiple. Potency means it has a capacity to divide. So pluripotent stem cell will undergo changes or differentiate into different types of cells, multiple types of cells. So here this pluripotent stem cell which is present in red bone marrow, it will give rise to two lineages or it will differentiate into two lineages. One is myeloid lineage and we have lymphoid lineage. Okay. I think the term lymphoid itself tells us it, it actually nothing but lymphatic system. It's a part of lymphatic system. So the cells which are responsible for immunity, that cells are under lymphoid lineage. So what are those cells? T cells, B cells and we have natural killer cells. We have three cells under lymphoid lineage. Now what all are present in myeloid? The remaining ones. So what is the remaining? One is RBC. Red blood cells. And remember red blood cells are not complete cells. They doesn't have nucleus. They doesn't have organelles in it. Okay. So how it occurs we will discuss in further. So I said I will discuss uh, each type of cell again. Okay. So RBC. What are left? Megakaryocyte. In the last video, I said megakaryocyte undergoes fragmentation and it gives rise to platelets. Okay, we have platelets. Another one, what are left? Granulocytes. So, what all comes under this granulocytes? We know that there are in WBC, we have a granulocytes and granulocytes. So, in granulocytes, we have different cells that is 
is nofil, basophil, neutrophil. Okay? And there is another cell that is monocyte. And you know this monocyte will undergo maturation and gives rise to macrophage. And also there is another cell coming out from here. That is nothing but mast cell. Okay? Which is also a type of granulocyte. Right? So these are the different types of cells which arise from pluripotent stem cells. So this is about hemopoiesis and remember except lymphocytes all other cells they does not divide after they leave red bone marrow only lymphocytes have the capacity to divide okay so this is about hemopoiesis i hope this video is useful for you if you think it is useful or it is helping for you please share with your friends if you have liked the video please like it, share it and subscribe to my channel. If you have any doubts regarding this video, you can actually comment in the comment section. Thank you very much.